Hello again. So now it is time for us to get into these instructional videos. I am going to start with the enrollment coordinator videos. So if that is the position that you were hired for, feel free to follow along with me in the training manual that you should see in your Google Docs, okay? So I'm sharing the screen. So as I go through everything, you'll be able to see the process, hear me talk about it and follow along in the manual, okay? So when you get the documents shared with you, this is what um, your page or your um, link should look like when you open it, okay? As I said, we're going to start with the enrollment coordinator manual. And so the first thing, just like any other sales-based business, we have to attract potential clients, which we call leads, okay? The ways that we do that is through, we have an interest form on our website. So if there's parents who are interested in, in enrolling their dancer, they can complete that interest form. And then we'll get an email letting us know that a parent has completed that interest form for us to follow up with them. We also have an Instagram page, which is Main Attraction Dance. So for anyone who follows our page, we send them a direct message that says, hello, thank you for following us and feel free to follow up with us if you have a dancer who may be interested in classes, even if they don't have children. You know, social media is so huge right now that allows us to create um, engagement opportunities with everyone who uh, follows our page, whether they have dancers or not, because we are also offering adult classes as well. And so even if they don't have a dancer, they may be interested in some of the adult classes that we're offering, okay? So looking at, yeah, I think that's it. So looking at the enrollment coordinator manual, following along with me. So the first thing that you're going to do when you come into the studio every day, you're going to check the studio phone to see if there were any text messages or voicemails about parents or anyone showing interest in renting the space or um, enrolling their dancer or taking a class themselves. And you're going to follow up with them using the scripts that we have provided for you all. We like to make it as easy as possible. So here are the scripts that you'll be using depending on which way you're engaging with people. So we have, um, and they're all listed and titled so you know exactly which script to use with um, which, whichever person that is asking you for um, information. So we have an IG follow, we have a parent interest. So if, once the parent completes an interest form or once we send the DM that says, thank you for following and follow up with us if you have a dancer that you want to enroll. If they say yes, we say, hey, this is how you can join us. You can either uh, join immediately by registering for classes or you can try a drop-in class. And that's, those are the links that we send to them. Once they sign up for open house, then we send them another message. So there's, there's a continuous interaction with our leads because the more interactions we have with them, the more friendly uh, follow-up that we're able to offer them, the more likely they will be willing to take a class or um, enroll their dancer in a class. So the, the scripts for text and emails, make sure that you are, depending on which thing you are doing, whether you're sending a text message or an email, make sure that you are sending the correct script because they are similar, but they are different depending on whether it's an email or a text. So just be very mindful about that. Open house email and all of that jazz. So I'm going to get into that a little bit later. So as I said, you're going to start by checking the phone every day to see if there's any voicemails or text messages about interest. Then you're going to check the studio email and our Wix app. So our website is done through Wix.com. And so Wix has apps that allow us to track our, um, that allows us to track our interest forms allows us to track people who are um, going to the page for other reasons. So for instance, our parents who have already enrolled, but they're going to the website to pay their costume or tuition fees. So you're checking our interest form function for, any, for anyone who may have um, signed the, the interest form. And of course, checking the studio um, Instagram page, which I already 
discuss. Um, once you are doing all of those things and people are starting to show interest, you want to follow up with them every two to three days. You don't want to do it every day because that may be overwhelming and people have a lot of other things going on. So we don't want to harass people, but we do want to offer that fast, friendly follow-up that we were talking about. So continue to reach out to all of our potential uh, clients or our leads every two to three days until you see that they have started the next process in you know, registering for a class or registering for a trial class, or if they tell you that they need time and they're not interested or they need to revisit it at another time. And there is also a script to send for those as well. And keeping a to-do list or a checklist for yourself That'll, that reminds you that you may need to reach out to these people, even if it's a few months from now, just keep a running list of how people are responding so that you know when to follow up with them based on the timeline that they're giving you. Scrolling through the manual now. So now leads becoming trials. This is the exciting part. Now that we've made contact with the leads, they will most likely want to sign up for a trial class or an open house class, okay? So when you're sending them the link, this is most likely what it's going to look like. It may have a different uh, graphic up top, but this is pretty much the gist of it. So it has the information to allow them to uh, type in their dancer's name, age, which classes they're interested in for their dancer, how many classes they've chosen total, and then uh, the parents giving their contact information as well so that we can follow up with them. As more people fill out these um, trial class RSVP forms or the open house RSVP forms, you will start to see numbers next to this responses prompt right here. So you can click those and you will see names and contact information of people um, who have already completed the form. You will also see this little document here that allows you to create a spreadsheet so that you can view all of the responses in a nice spreadsheet, columns and rows form. It's really great for me because I just, I love things that are organized. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> so when that happens, if, so you, you wanna make sure that there hasn't already been a, um, a spreadsheet created from that uh, Google form, because then you'll have two and that could be um, a bit confusing or and it might be difficult to follow. But if there isn't one, then you can click that green, um, you can click that green icon and it will populate to um, this Google sheet, okay? So of course these names are just sample names so that you can get an idea of what the sheet is going to look like. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. So once you click that green icon, it'll have the same title as the, uh, the Google form. So that helps you keep it all straight because we have multiple open houses throughout, the, throughout each semester. And so you want to, um, Make sure that you're looking at the right one so that you're contacting um, our current leads because a lot of the leads from our current, um, from our previous spreadsheets, thankfully will may already be members. And so there won't be a need to contact them in terms of enrollment. That will be the office assistant's job to then follow up with them as actual members of the studio. So once you look at this sample sheet, you're going to scroll over this way to see who has submitted the payments. Of course, because this is an open house class, there is a fee for the class. Right now it's $15, it may change, but right now it's $15. And when, so this is, these are columns that we add to the, to this list. They are not um, a part of the response sheet, but it's for our, um, our reference so that we know which parent has already paid, which date they paid and the method that they paid. PP is PayPal, cash of course is, um, cash and then cash app is we also have a cash app that parents can use if the parents um, pays the day of and they use a credit card we will still input that data as the date and pp because our point of sale system is um, paypal so when they use a credit card they are still paying through our paypal system okay 
This is also going to be helpful when you are reaching out to parents who have RSVP'd because you wanna know who you've already contacted and who you still have to contact. So one of the things that we do um, in these sheets is we um, color code things, which helps us know exactly what we've done and what we still need to do. So as I'm reaching out to parents, the last parent that I reached out to, I'm going to highlight them in lavender, okay? So it's easy to remember because L last, L lavender. So this is the last person that I, um, this is the last parent that I reached out to. So obviously that means that this parent must have filled out the form after I contacted all of these parents. So this, um, this cell being highlighted in lavender lets me know that this is the last person that I contacted and I need to follow up with this parent because I have not reached out to them yet. So, and once I do that, then I'm going to delete the lavender highlight from this cell, and then I'm going to add it to the last parent. So each time you go further down the list and you're reaching out to parents, you want to remove the lavender highlight from the last parent that you talked to, and then move it down to the most recent parent that you talked to, if that makes sense. So once you've done that, we're good to go. We they've gotten the information because you sent it. You sent the the open house script to them um, via email and text. Okay, and I think I think that's going to be it for right now. I'll do the next video to share a little bit more about the open house process.